You know what? This had a shower, right? And if you ever had this happen with you where you're having a shower and suddenly a spider out of nowhere. And then you spend most of the time freaking keeping your eye on it rather than actually doing anything else, you know. Just like, I, w just like, I want to just wash my face by cock because it's like, I see you. You sneaky little bastard. I'm going to turn around and you're going to come closer, aren't you? I know what you little bastards are like. You're like, Ted, you're it. You're like, well, splat, you're dead. Except I didn't do that. I don't actually, like, most people would just be like, oh, spider, whack. Me, I just keep my distance. Trouble is, I was in the shower at the time, so it's like, trying to freaking clean my face, wash my face and all that, the spider there. So it was like, uh, 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 no, where, where the fuck you go? Uh, 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 stay away. I don't know. So that sucked. Chi Chan wanted to give you the handouts the substitute teacher gave out while He Chan was sleeping. Handouts. Ah! If we... <laughs> what the fuck, man? Why is it blurry? Oh, because it thrusted right in his face, I guess. I suddenly find two sheets of paper thrust down in front of my face. Well, in front of your face. So you should be able to see it. Why is it blurred? Following the hand of holding them, I see the skilled painting figure looking down at me with a distant scowl. I guess I really am in the wrong here. Ah, uh, uh, sorry about that. No dice, her irritated face still holds. I clasp my hands together and flick my head downwards in a bulgy. Very, very sorry. She huffs and simply drops the papers on the desk. Damn. I look up over my hands and see Shazidi and Misha signing frantically to each other. A look of frustration on Shazini's face. It looks to be less of a dialogue and more of a tarot. <laughs> Punctuated a side long glance that is at me. To say it's unsettling is an understatement. Um. The two suddenly stop signing and look at me in unison. Both having exactly the same look of disapproval. In one fluid motion, Misha's hand suddenly extends high above me and comes rocketing down. Who I can even hope to react to my head is sent bouncing up and down like a jack in the box. I quickly bring my hands to my head to more out of reflex than actual pain. Ow! What was that for? I open my eyes to see the two grinning at each other while exchanging an enthusiastic thumbs up. God damn, this will remind me of that story that I've been writing. <laughs> there is a. Like. There's a. Like, well, Shine has a serious side to her, but. Well, actually, so the, that's got like two characters in the story. One of them tends to do this freaking enthusiastic thumbs up all the time. I don't know why I decided to have that as a characteristic, but I threw in there because why not? And the other one is like very serious and like at one point did chop someone on the head like that. Chi Chan said she forgives you now, He Chan. Can you forgive me with a little less force next time? Ah, that's more the force than he received, my ears. Ha <laughs> ha I look at the two of a blank face, which ends the day. One, his out, nil. Oh, she chan also says that you should check your student mail more often. Oh, it's that. It's in kanji, but it's got a bit of... A, oh, 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 shit, I forgot what it's called now. Hurricane and it's the other one. I forget what it's called. I haven't actually gone over those yet though, so I have no idea. But it's definitely got kanji in there as well. I mean, I think that's kanji, that's kanji. That might be kanji. Not sure about that. That's kanji, that's kanji, that's probably kanji, that's kanji. Pretty much most of it is kanji. Super is a bright yellow envelope and ends it as a ribbon. Exhibiting green. Strange, who could have written me a letter? And now is not the time, it was definitely not the place to find out though. Giving up on the nap on the nap so cruelly stolen from me, I rub my forehead and slowly get up, putting the sheets and envelope in my bag before swinging it over my shoulder. 
I take a step back and move to the part with a small bow, while Misha clutches her side laughing and Shazini nods back in a curt farewell. I join the floor of students exiting the open the hall and turn the corner into the hallway. You know what would be weird is if I did an audio kind of recording. You know, like they have for books where they have like the audio recording. Can you imagine if I read that? <laughs> It'd be so confusing. Just switching voices right away and just be like, I join the floor of students exiting the open the door and turn the corner into the hallway. It's like, what happened with his voice in that sentence? Ow! I'll just end the face to face with Hanako. Well, uh, hey Hanako. Uh, good afternoon, Isao. And then you have that in there as well. It's like, man, this guy's voice sucked. It's terrible. Just read it normally. Silence falls between us as busily chatting students passes by. She spits in constantly, her eyes drawn to her rather unremarkable footwear. I take the bridge of my nose in my fingers while I blink my eyes heavily in an attempt to make things seem clearer. I'm barely staying awake as it is. Annika, you want to say something? What is it? Um, I want you to give you this. Hmm? She holds out a small rectangular piece of paper. I blink again to make out the text. Uh, barely open eyes. Slowly start to make out what's written. Eggs, two. Bread, one. Whole grain cereal, one. Fine, one. I guess that's why it's called a brief history of fine. I have no idea what's gonna come in this, but looking at this reminds me of this freaking game called Root and Factory uh, Oceans. It's called Tides of Time in America. Again, with that, it's just like, why the games get released? And like, one country, usually the US, has a title that's different. I mean, keep it the same title, man, it gets confusing, especially when I Google, like, the walkthrough or something for the game, because it always comes up as Tides of Destiny, or Time of it was Destiny, I think it was. But anyway, to the point, they had, like, this one brief bit where it's like, oh, go get these stuff from these various people. It was a very brief side quest in the game. I don't know, you know, I know why I thought of it. Because of this list right here reminds me of it, because it's listed in the exact similar way. I think they even wanted eggs as well, but whatever. A uh, shopping list? I look upwards, raising an eyebrow. I usually go shopping with Lily, but I can't come, so... You want me to run errands for you? If it's okay if you don't want to, I just thought that maybe, um... She's panicking, I sigh, yet another battle lost. At this time, by a weekly fourth surrender. I smile tiredly and rest a hand on her head to calm her down. Pat on the head, well, he didn't do a pat on it, he's more of a guess like, yeah, I'll do this, it'll be fine, and all that shit. It's fine, I was gonna go anyway. Just, uh, stuff on this list. She nods and bows deeply, twice as if to make her gratitude perfectly clear. We're going to uh, meet outside the school gates at six. Thank you, I was going to get it, but I need to study for the test tomorrow. Test? Ah, that's right, science. Uh, how are you doing with it? She brings ever so slightly. I've been spending more time on it than before. I, I think I can do okay. Good work, then. She too starts smiling and much more earnestly than I at, uh, than I at that. Pat on the head. Congratulations, pat on the head. I have full confidence that I can do fine in it without any extra studying, but the fact that she is putting it in the effort instead of just reading in the library is heartening. You know, since you're like bringing up like how you're doing in school and all that, how am I doing with my course that I keep mentioning a billion times? Uh, I remember getting 100% on like, not like a large amount of questions, it's just kind of jumbled really. It's like, what is the best reply to this and then they'll say something in Japanese and they'll give you two options and those are the ones that usually throw me off because it's like shit I've been so busy trying to freaking write all this down that I haven't even looked at it properly but I got like a hundred percent on like this one where you just like at the hotel kind of like phrases for that surprised me because I screwed up on like uh, greetings I was doing well, then I screwed up on one because I didn't freaking look at my notes. It's like, I got this wrong! Ah, fuck. But it surprised me that I got at least 100% on one of them. Can't do the pronunciation with shit for the most part, but hey, at least I'm getting better at deciphering Japanese. Although it's only hiragana, so really. 
With that in mind, I'd be screwed, really, wouldn't I? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can sort of read Hiragana, yes. But, oh, what about Kanji? And, you know, when they throw in, you know, whatever the hell the other one was, it's like, haven't got a clue. Anyways, I have full gummies of the lower hotly. I'll grab your stuff and take it to your dorm in the evening. See ya. For a small way of your ways. I'll go near my home before meeting Lily. I should be able to take care of it in time. Wrangling with a particularly complicated math problem has caused me to uh, be a little bit late for my meeting with Lily. You know, does this track have a drum beat at all? I don't think it does. You know, that's one thing that's bugged me. Like, I've just been thinking about it, say. It's like, I feel frustrated now when it comes to recording music. It's usually almost completely improvised, and when it isn't, I don't usually record it because I haven't got the bass and the drums. I have no idea how to approach the drums, because at one, I do not have a drum kit, two, I do not have a drum machine, and three, the closest thing to a drum that I've got is on my keyboard, or tab, essentially. And that's a pain in the ass, so I'm crap at that. And then there's bass. I've got a bass guitar, but it's uh, right-handed. I've got it restrung left-handed, but I don't really have a proper bass amp, and it's not in tune, and I do not feel confident in trying to tune a bass guitar, because it's out of tune and all, and bass guitar strings are freaking huge. I've had freaking guitar strings snap, and they hurt. A freaking bass? Holy shit, no, I don't want to freaking risk that. So that pisses me off, it's just like, that's why I tend to like, anytime you've heard any of my music that I make, it's almost always just guitar and keyboard. Because that's pretty much all I've got for recording with. Or rather, the other, well, it is technically, I mean I have a bass like I mentioned, but it's the two that I'm the best at really. I'm good at using the keyboard, to an extent, guitar, obviously. When it comes to structuring, you know, writing shit down, keyboard. I got nothing. I just improvise almost every time. Like, I have an idea in mind, it's like, okay, we'll be playing an E major. Sort of, but it's all improvised. Guitar, it's like chord progression, come up with that, come up with a riff or two, a solo, and blah, 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 blah. Essentially, it pisses me off that I don't know how to play drums and bass properly. Or have, you know, any way of actually playing drums for that matter. But, anyways, rambling. Only a couple of minutes, but enough to make me step smartly out into the courtyard and to the school gates. I make a right turn and start my way towards the small town below, leaving a few students turning the other way to the bus station. Is that? Yeah, that's just an acoustic the whole time, isn't it? When it's doing that, it makes it sound like a kind of an electric piano. Also like the little slides you can hear in between that. I slip my right hand into my pockets as I walk in the orange sunlight of dusk. Thankfully, the sweltering summer heat's starting to die down, making way for a pleasant cool breeze. When I stretch my hands high above my head, a familiar figure takes form, cane in her right hand. Ah, Lily! She stops and turns around, swiveling her head slightly to try and work out exactly where the voice came from. Ah, uh, hey, it's me. I quickly catch up to her, coming in beside her and matching her slow pace as we resume walking. Good afternoon, Asao. Hi there. I glance up at the sky. A distinct tinge of orange discolors the clouds, watching the foot for a path in its flight. Long shadows in the trees fall across the wide road down the hill. So, Isao, what brings you here? Uh, just gone to town to grab some groceries. Uh, Hanako sent me. Hanako sent you? Yeah, said she needed a study for a test tomorrow. I was going to come down anyway, so we'll just buy her stuff as well. Unspoken is that Lily really sh uh, could use some help to get food, but it's an obvious fact that neither of us needs to stay. It's good to hear she's studying for it. I uh, would the same when she asked me to come with you. We continue walking down the street, a familiar sound of rookie echoing through the air as we go. Except for the occasional passing car and the leaves whispering in the branches, 
there's a blissful silence. You know, that's one thing that boggles my mind is that anywhere, pretty much anywhere that has a road, well, I, not, I, I kind of contradict that by saying no, technically not. But for the most part, where there is a road, there will always be cars. I mean, that's obvious, but I mean, like, it's mind boggling how, like, no matter what time it is, this car is going all the damn time. Like, in the countryside, then, like, this, it's only occasional, but it's, like, you know, not incredibly rare. It's, like, maybe a few minutes between passing at most. It's not like, oh, two hours pass and not a single car passes. No, a couple of cars will pass within that time. It's ridiculous. And then in a freaking town or a city, cars all the time, every single freaking minute, every second, cars, cars. And it just goes to show how many people there are in the world. It's ridiculous. But then I thought, what about, you know, like, those long desert roads? They'd probably be, I don't know, I've never been on a desert road, but usually when I see them de depicted, they're usually barren. Barely any cars, like maybe one car, maybe a second car, and that's it. Very rare, I don't know. Anyway, thank god I can finally relax for the first time today. Then he falls asleep. I glance over at Lily. That bubbling face of hers never seems to lack that air of relaxed confidence. I guess the same could be said of her personality too. As she sadly walks, her face remaining pointed to the street ahead of her. I look ahead and save the cool air blowing over my face. Now back to the audiobook thing, like if I did an audiobook recording thing. I mean imagine that. Not only would it probably have like, you know, me trying to voice the characters, my voice changing all the damn time. It'd probably have me rambling as well. It's like, wait, this isn't part of the story, is it? No, if I actually did an audio recording like that, I'd actually, you know, try to read it properly and probably be like, ah, da, 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 ah fuck, I messed up that line. Redo it, redo it. Because that happens all the time. This is probably the calmest moment I've had since the about face my life took so recently. Have it while looking to get some groceries. What a weird life. I feel the crumpled up notes rubbing against my hand in my pocket and pull it out to check its contents. Let's see here. Eggs, bread, cereal, fine, lettuce, shaved ham. I don't remember lettuce or shaved ham. It must have been more on that list I didn't show. That sounds like quite a bit to carry back along with your... Uh, with, with, what? Oh, I see. With your own. Uh, yeah, just how much does this girl eat anyway? My mind suddenly clicks that yes, there actually is a person beside me. Wait, I mean... She laughs wholeheartedly. My mind, Sal. Her giggles punctuate her words, though she's making a little effort to suppress them. Actually, back up. What was on that list? Uh, eggs, bread, cereal, and fine lettuce and shaved ham. So, you got cereal for the morning. Maybe you'll have some eggs in the morning as well. Maybe some toast. I'm not sure what the fire will be for, or the lettuce, or well, you could. I don't know. Maybe have. Maybe she wants a salad or something. I don't know. Air guitar. Quite direct today, aren't we? Yeah, you got me there. Still, it's quite a bit. I mean, wow, it's like just about enough food for maybe a day? I don't know. Usually I go shopping with Hanako, so I know what she buys. It's the same thing every week. Huh? Is she a good cook? She gives a nervous giggle. Well, that explains why it's nothing really complicated. It's usually me who ends up cooking. I used to do so flat reds, so it's no problem doing it for Hanako as well. You can cook, but... A short hum with an amused lilt emanates from beside me. I wonder if the fact that she seems amused by my comments often is actually genuine, or rather just from a want to make me more comfortable in addressing her blindness. There are ways around it. Some meals are more difficult to cook than others because of being unable to see what I'm doing. But it usually only takes a little more time. 
fingers can double as very useful measurement tools, for example. Makes sense, but you'd have to be pretty careful not to hurt yourself. Ow! 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 I wonder how ow many times I've happened ow, given that it sounds like she's cooked alone for ow, possibly years while Akira worked and her parents were gone. With that, the conversation trails off. Compared to the awkward silence, is all of Anako. Lily seems generally content to say what she thinks and stays quiet when there's nothing to say. So is she more introverted? Well, that doesn't necessarily define being introverted, really. Well, it's partly, you know, like... I, I don't know. That, that's a kind of contradiction then, isn't it? I see myself as an introverted person, but I just don't shut the fuck up in these videos, do I? It's just that if you met me in real life, I would be mostly silent, and then you'd be like, Oh, I see what you mean about the social anxiety and the introverted sides. The slick roads under my feet is big in an orange glow. The occasional fallen leaf crunching underfoot as we walk. I let out a deep yawn and my lack of sleep coming back on me. Did you not get much sleep last night? Uh, I couldn't sleep at all for the last two nights. Probably insomnia. Louis' face suddenly becomes worried. It feels like a personal failure. Wait. Yeah, it feels like a personal failure every time she gets worried about my well being, even if it's generally nice to know someone cares. You have insomnia. Aren't you going to see the nurse about it? And now uh, I know what we all need. It's happened before a few times. My meds screw with my sleeping occasionally. Well. I just figured, well, what's that? I just like, my sleeping pattern's crap, really. I mean, like, it's just terrible. It's like, never consistent, ever. Well, it can be consistent, but for a whole week, no. It will eventually just, like, get all screwed up and I'll be sleeping for the day. But currently, I'm awake in the day. But come weekends, I usually end up sleeping. And, like, waking up in the afternoon or evening. Not all the time, but it does tend to happen around weekends. I just, like, uh, pfft. Whatever. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Come on, it's not your fault. At least I shouldn't have any trouble getting to sleep tonight. You do worry me sometimes. I worry you. I reach around and scratch the back of my neck. I kind of want to address this. Uh, hey, Lily. Hmm? I don't mean to sound weird, but please try to forget about my heart condition. She looks kind of lost. I hardly blame her. I guess what I'm trying to get at is, uh, just don't treat me differently because of it. She bows her head slightly, her white cheeks threatening almost invisibly. It's only natural to worry about those around you. Well, it's still nice to know there's someone like that out there. It may be somewhat embarrassing to say, but it's the truth. Lily takes a breath to regain her composure and manages a gentle smile. Though her cheeks remain flushed. You know, that's kind of fitting, really, that he says that, because wasn't it in the previous part when Lily said something to herself about not kind of, like, looking at them differently just because of their disabilities and all that? Like, Lily with her blindness, Hanako with her scars, and social skills or rather lack of the final downhill walk to the store passes in silence welcome oh wait what does it say what do they say when they say welcome usually or a shy or something like that right i think i'm not sure kanji again wait no not yeah that is kanji actually kind of looks like a freaking fire extinguisher I mean, if I if the freaking course ever does get around to kanji, I don't know how we'll be able to go over them. It's gonna be a pain in the ass trying to freaking well, I I can't even say right. More like draw these characters. I mean, I can draw these just fine. Actually, what is that one? No, that one. I should have memorized it by now. Have I got it on here? I think that's O, actually. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but it's like an O. 
As for that, I think that Kiragana went the hell, so I'm not sure on that one. That one as well. And the lines, I think I mentioned it before. I'm pretty sure they mean that, like, the bit before it goes on longer. So, say, like, uh, for example, say if it's written in Romantia as an S, it would have two S's to indicate using this. Also, has, like, the small Pac Man face that seems to uh, function the same way. Although I haven't, I don't fully understand it, but it seems similar. I'm probably making no sense with a description like that, am I? Get on with it! I suppose I'll get my stuff first, then Hanako's on the second round. I grabbed two well-worn red baskets from the stack beside the entrance and passed one to Lily. Just as she did before, she lays it on the ground and slides a retracted cane between the basket's handles before picking it back up with her right hand. When she takes hold of my arm in her own, I am surprised at just how fast this kind of casual contact became so natural, mostly due to necessity, no doubt. Shall we? Sure. While we navigate around the store, the odd person occasionally passing us pays us no heed at all. It's nice compared to the stares and whispers around the city. As we reach each other, I quickly check with Lily and she found what she needs and grab it along with what I want, putting our items into their respective baskets. It's an odd feeling to be dependent so on so much for something so basic as shopping. Anika would, practically, uh, would be practically a necessity for her to pick out what she wants, after all. You know, really, they both really need each other on that, really, don't they? I mean, like, if Hanukkah went on her own with her social skills, she probably wouldn't. She'd be like, or if she did, she'd be really fast. It's like, uh, 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 straight away. So in a way, they kind of like, uh, complete each other in a way with that. Like, Lily's the confident kind of more dealing with the social situations. Hanukkah's her eyes, essentially, and all that. Right, I'm pretty much done with both my stuff and Hanukkah's. You need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go, then. Oddly, there's a queue a mile long. What? And certain the store is only large enough to warrant one count. Hunter, seems like it'll take a while. Damn. Lily gives an inquisitive look, unable to see the reason for my complaints. The queue is really long. Looks like we'll have to wait. How strange. Sharing the same mood of resignation, we reluctantly take our place at the end of the line. One person finishes, the line moves up. Another person finishes, the line moves up. What is this, a damn bank? By the time we finally reach the head of the line, I'm so close to dozing off that Lily has to gently pat me on the back for me to move up. It's how, it's how. Hmm? Ah, sorry. She gives a short sigh of preservation as I move up, getting the groceries for Hanako and I to put into separate bags. Thank you, please come again. By the time we emerge from the store, Lily's holding a single bag while I struggle to carry four. Both hands well and truly full. It's a lot of work, but thankfully the items in them are light. Even without looking skyward, it's obvious that a surprising amount of time's passed. The roads outside are being dark and lit by street lamps. Once Lily retrieves her <coughs> cane, we set hands back to the dormitories the way we came, leaving the welcoming warm glow of the store. Despite the road being empty of cars, the full bags have done abundantly make up for the lack of noise, constantly clunking and squeaking together. My my, Sao, it's good to find that you're eating well. I'm a growing guy, after all. I need to eat all I can. Hmm, it must be nice being a man. What? Seemingly not noticing or ignoring my surprise at the completely out of left field comment, she continues on without missing a beat. Weight doesn't really bother you when eating, most of the time. I get what you mean. Women tend to worry about stuff like that more than we do, I guess. Exactly, it makes me somewhat envious, to be honest. You know what? I imagine like an excuse just like, you know what, man? What the hell, man? You should like, you should be like, you know, no fat whatsoever, skinny. It's like, fuck it, man. We're all gonna get old one day and we'll have a beer gun anyway, so who gives a fuck? It's like, uh, yeah, but if you don't, you know, uh, exercise a bitch, you might not make it to that stage in the first place. Well, it's not like we could outright ignore it. 
We have an affirmative nod, we continue on our walk. Ah, that's right. What is it? Monaco mentioned your birthday was early this year. Do anything special for it? Err, it's one of those type of questions that gives a long pause lost in thought for a few seconds of should cause events. Not really. It was just Hanako and I having a little party during the night after school. Your birthday is supposed to be a big event, you know. <laughs> just that awkward silence again as I'm just like thinking, what to say to that? I can't remember the last time, like, I had a birthday that felt like a big event. Birthdays after a certain point just tend to be like, ah, yeah, I'm a year older. Hooray! Or more of, ah, uh, the extent of whatever dread sets in is like, oh my god! And you know what? That's another thing I realized. Like, this year I'll be 20 freaking 5. 20! Five. That's a quarter of a century! Like, fuck! Where'd that time go? Seriously, where? Sounds like a pretty lonely way to spend a birthday, just she and Hanako staying overnight. Birthdays always felt like a family occasion for me. They were a time when, in spite of their full-time jobs, both my parents would make an effort to be there for the day, or at least for a party before ha uh, hand. Reminds me of how Lily mentioned she hasn't seen her family in such a long time. They even end up moving away from Akira's house afterwards. But I guess it's the same in situations as men uh, mundane as these. Considering her inability to read the packaging, just getting groceries would be a pain to have somebody else around. In the end, she just has Hanako and I, and Akira went off from work. Be that as it may, she still seems to have many more distant friends among the students, not to mention people like Yuko. It seems to be her own choice that there's such a separation between those who are close to her and those who she only socializes with. It humbles me a little to see how much Lily seems to have her life set up and going just as she wants. Yet, Honiko is there for her to celebrate her birthday, and I'm here helping her with shopping. It's a weird kind of symbiote, I suppose. Are you alright, Asal? Sorry? You just seem to go very quiet. That's all. Ah, uh, sorry, I was just thinking. Oh. Ah, now I've picked her curiosity. It feels kind of overly personal to talk about, though. Uh, this is the first choice in our route. Walk through. Tell the truth! It was just kind of... Uh, I was thinking about how you seem to have everything so sorted out, even with Hanukkah relying on you. I can admit that even I kind of relied on you when I first transferred in. I think it's a good quality to have. I turned to Lily, surveying her reaction. She's forcing herself to look forward and furrowing her brow quite a bit. Her face looks a bit awkward, as if she was trying to find just the right words. Lily? I would thank you, but assuming that I don't rely on the presence of others is too much. It'd be wrong to think that Hanako simply depends on me with nothing in return. She seems to have a bit of a, t a bit of trouble saying it, even though it's largely why I'd fought already. If she tried so hard to maintain her independence, as anyone would have had to do in a position, cited or not, maybe she finds it hard to talk about her own needs. It's only now that I realize an omission in what she says, though. I decide to follow it up, largely in jest to avoid things getting too personal. Oh, and what about me? She suddenly runs ahead of me and turns, blocking my, blocking me off. Does she literally run? I'm picturing it, and it's kind of an odd sight. With smiles, she holds her hands behind her as she leans forwards. You're different. And with that, she turns back and continues to walk ahead of me, a newfound spring in her step. All I can do is raise an eyebrow and give a dazed grin. I don't think I've ever seen this playful and teasing side of her before. So, I'm different. It's hard to work out the exact context, but knowing her, this ambiguous idea of what was intended. Our relationship has been changing, at the very least simply because I've begun to stand on my own feet more and so I'm getting more curious about the situation of those around me. As to why, probably a mix of personal curiosity and a want to try and work out how to deal with my situation. I'm less sure of Lily though, that's why her own statements, so similar to my own feelings towards her, throws me off so much. Watching her make her way up the street, cane tapping from left to right, 
I decided to settle the matter later and just smile. It's a nice side to her, I don't want to forget it. Eventually we get to the girls' dormitories, both my arms aching from the weight of two sets of groceries. Ah, <sighs> finally here. I bend down to wipe my forehead with the back of my hand. Lindy stops in front of her door and sets down her bag, fishing around in her pocket for the key. Thank you, Sal. I really appreciate your help. Ow. Ah, this is nothing. Might be nothing to you, but it's definitely something for me. With that, she steps through a door, closing it behind her. I blink. Those were nothing but honest thanks, but I can't help feeling something different about them. Anyway, I have something else to do before I can- Ow! Mull on that at my leisure. I turn back to the door to Hanukkah's room, and proceed to knock twice in quick succession, the bags still in my hands, rustling together. Oh yeah. <laughs> this thing, she looks different there, like, well, duh! The last time we'd seen her, you know, poke her head essentially out from behind her door, was when we got her bad ending. Well, actually, it also led to her good ending as well, technically, but whatever. But, she, well, whatever. After a couple of seconds, it also leaves. If one weren't looking closely, they could be forgiven for thinking it hadn't moved at all. I twist my head to the side to try and peer through the tiny silver of the gap between the door and the door frame. Uh, hey, Hanako, I've got your stuff. Ah. With that, she opens the door completely, making her plain room visible over her shoulder. Sparsely decorated, it's probably even more remarkable than my room. Held at my right arm, both bags almost pulling it straight back down with their weight. Thank you, Sam. I'm sorry to make you carry them all this way. It's fine, don't worry. Just don't make me do it every day, okay? I pass the bags her as I give a light-hearted chuckle after the initial transfer of which she manages to take them easily. I'll be off then. Night, Hanako. Good, good night now. See you in class tomorrow. We have a deep bell with her grocery still held in both hands. She steps back and shuts the door. I still don't get the brief history of Fime. We didn't learn nothing about Fime. I was expecting like something to lead into a <laughs> well, whatever. Making my way back to my own dorm, I put one bag into my other hand to balance the balance. Even as I do so, I can't get Lily's light-hearted smile out of my mind. When I had first met her, it would have been nearly impossible to imagine her like that. Indeed, it feels like we've become closer in the past few weeks since I first got to know both she and Hanago. The time that I spend with her each day, the small exchange of happiness we share, those small moments of joy as I get closer to her. I'm far from certain, but I don't think these are just the normal feelings of friendship. Once I return to my room, I store away my groceries and begin getting ready for the night. When suddenly, I swap the school bags in my bag for those I'll need tomorrow, pulling out the yellow envelope Misha gave me earlier in the process. I got so sidetracked by one thing after another that I couldn't deal with it earlier. Who could have written me, I wonder? The name neatly adorning the back of the envelope freezes me in my tracks. It's been so long since I've seen her writing, there's little chance I could have identified it as hers otherwise. It would not go. Why? Would she, should she have written me? I can't think of any good reason for her to do this. I must don't open the letter, but there'd be little point to that. If I just left it alone, its mere existence would gnaw at me until I did something about it. I look down at the piece of paper on my desk. It's bright and summery decoration beaming happily at me. So is it written like, uh, you know, just like, that's a whole sentence or something, blah, 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 actually. I see Hiragana! Well, it's probably, yeah, it's got a few kinds of characters in there, but it's freaking in Hiragana! Too bad it's kind of hard to freaking see most of it. It doesn't really matter either. Wait, actually. Damn it, I can't work out what is that. It's too blurry. I know that the fishing hook one is she. That is... Fuck, I forget. I think that's Ree. 
Rishi. Fuck it. We already know what's gonna say anyway. Dark down the piece of paper on my desk. It's bright and already decoration beaming happily at me. I mean, look at that! How the freaking hell am I supposed to read that? Imagine if it did that. It's just like, I'll just read it off that. We're not gonna actually give you the writing here. The lettering is in pink, jarring badly with the yellow sunflower border of or the, uh, or the card. What? Jarring badly with the yellow sunflower border or the card. Of the card. Well, I suppose there's bound to be typos in pretty much everything, really. The handwriting is neat. The characters haven't been written thoroughly and with an unusual amount of care. Now back to that story that I keep mentioning that I'm writing, I mean, every time I add anything new to it, and like, go back to it the next time and just kind of read over it again, like the bit that I had read, that uh, writ previously, there's always typos and spell mistakes, you're like, damn it, how did I not notice that when I was writing it? No wonder why people like have like, uh, what are they called? Uh... Some proofreader or something like that, I can't remember. I'd barely given the letter a second thought when it was given to me, but now I can't get its contents out of my mind. Well, I'd like to say that I don't know why she used such an old-fashioned method of communication, considering a phone call or an email would be both much faster and easier. The answer feels obvious enough given the contents. Content. A letter leaves a comfortable distance between the sender and the recipient. Unlike a phone, it isn't required that you engage in conversation, and unlike email, there is less expectation of an immediate reply. Statements such as the third year seem to be very anxious about the final exams. And it's so weird to think that we are already seniors, isn't it? Or just small talk. Small talk that could have been achieved by simply replying to any of the messages I'd sent her while in hospital. The ending, though, is the true reason she sent this. The last couple of lines added almost as an afterthought. You know, this is uh, different, isn't it? He's kind of just skimming through it instead of reading the whole thing like he usually does. I wonder if we will meet again. Perhaps it's best if we don't. It's a statement that should hurt. I've always heard breakups on nasty stuff. It feels like this is simply a affirmation of what we both already knew instead. Is the preceding text no more than small talk that makes me feel most uneasy? I can't figure out why, no matter how long I sit here and look down at the bright and summery piece of paper. If you would like to correspond with me, by all means write me back. It's plainly obvious that this is not the type of letter to re that be replied to. In the end, this letter is no more than a simple abdication of responsibility, a final statement to reassure herself that our relationship is over. As such, I find I have little problem in scrunching the letter and envelope into a bowl and tossing it into the waste bin, ridding myself of its existence. Well, that's different, isn't it? Or maybe it's gonna be one of the cases where later on in the route you'll come back to it. I don't know. I go to bed with mixed feelings, cheated out of a pleasant evening by this intruder from the past. Ironically, it takes a while before I can manage to sleep. Isn't that a bitch? I mean, even when you're freaking tired, you can't sleep. Ow! Be a pain in the ass. <laughs>